Today I'm going to be watching this video, it's Canadian legend Mike Myers on Canadian Pride. Now, I know that he's a legend in Canada, but he's also very loved in the UK as well. I believe at the start of his career he was actually on British TV, being specifically Scottish, he does an incredible Scottish accent as well, whether it's Shrek, uh, one of the characters in Austin Powers. Just a true legend, great actor, great comedian and interested to see his thoughts on Canadian Pride. Tell me what you think about them as well. Let's watch. Mike, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so you moved away 33 years ago. Yes. We kind of thought you'd forgotten about us. No, 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 quite the opposite. Yeah, your book is like, it's all full of, like, you're almost like a Canadian. I'm almost like a Canadian. Canadian, a hoarder. <laughs> me? Well, that's what happens. There's, there's nobody more Canadian than a Canadian who no longer lives in Canada. Yeah, that's actually a good point. That's actually quite relevant to me as well being Scottish but having lived outside of Scotland for the last 13 years I feel more Scottish now that I live outside of the country than I did when I was there I never really traveled much of Scotland before I left but moving away being surrounded by people from every other nationality I feel more proud being Scottish and our achievements when I've traveled back I've traveled more of Scotland than I ever did before I left Maybe that's quite a, an interesting thing that people who leave their country feel more patriotic. I don't know. And so, um, you know, I say in the book, and a lot of my friends in America accuse me of enjoying being Canadian. And I go, I do enjoy being Canadian. What's not to enjoy? It's not a perfect place. You know, as my dad would say, in a perfect world, you don't need a ut utopia. But, um, <laughs> but I challenge in the history of nation states to find any other country that's tried to get it right as much as Canada has. I you agree mean? with that. And just even in the act of trying to get it right is the right thing to do. We were very politically correct at times, and I always think, wasn't politically correct just being considerate and nice for the most part, you know what I mean? One can get trapped in it, but we're very polite people. When does that get bad? Uh, you know, <laughs> believe me, all you have to do is go to a country where people aren't polite. And you kind of love the Canadian standoff of two Canadians in a doorway, after you, oh, nobody, after you, after you, and you're just sitting there in New York, you'd be like, go, oh! right. But <laughs> what do you think about that, especially the politically correct part? Do you think that's still very prevalent in Canada? Have you seen it being lessened, being increased? And yeah, definitely that thing when you see other countries, when you go to other countries, I just recently went back to Scotland and living in Malaysia, you definitely see completely different personalities when it comes to politeness, uh, being affable, talking to other people and so on. Uh, for me, I love going back to Scotland for that and I guess Canadians would be, feel the same once you actually experience other countries and not having that politeness. Uh, nothing beats it really. In Canada, it's fantastic. You know, that's who we are. But are we too polite? Are we? Do we lack confidence? Can be I too mean, polite. You've decided to live there, you've succeeded there. I do love America. It's a great place to make things. And I make things, you know what I mean? Um, I miss Canada. You can take the boy out of Canada, but you can't take the Canada out of the boy. You know, it's, uh, I'm British by heritage. Yeah, your dad was staunchly British. Yeah. He didn't mm. like your accent. No, we, we had a Liverpool accent talk like that, like, great, love it. And then I would say, hey, dad, pass the sauce, and go, sauce. Because you hear that, missus? What a terrible accent our children have. I go, you're the limey <laughs> freak, dude. You're in my country. Whoa, okay, so his dad was British as well, so I guess that makes sense with how good he is at the accents. I didn't realise he had a Liverpool accent. That's actually a very difficult difficult accent to replicate. He did that very well as too. I know he does a lot of great accents, uh, but that was quite a difficult one, and he did it quite well. Uh, Interesting, I don't really know much about his background actually, about his family and so on, so tell me more about that if there's anything else that's interesting about that as well. We don't think we have an accent. The Canadian, there is no Canadian Yes, accent. there is a belief that in the integer of the English language that we are at zero linguistically or yeah. accent-wise. It's not true, we have a very thick Canadian. We, the accent is very, very pronounced, more than I think Canadians think. Some people maybe, some people yeah, Well, the one we always hear is oot. Say oot again. Oot. We don't say oot. Out. But there's a, I think, is it called a diphthong? I'm looking like as if there's a linguistic <laughs> Expert. linguist here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can would somebody find the linguist, please? Thank you. <laughs> it's out. Out. Oot and we is don't what really we say, say in Scotland. all the time. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do. We really do. And there's another thing, too, of Canadian women, uh, as a 
as a tendency, but not as a rule, the sort of, there's a, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. And in America, you know, an American was telling my sister-in-law in America a story, and she was being polite saying, so he's like, yeah, I was on the subway today. And she went, oh yeah, oh yeah. And the American was like, I'll get to the end of the story. You don't have to <laughs> shut me down. Yeah. It sounded like, oh yeah, will you stop talking? <laughs> well, exactly. Is that but something you've ever did? saying, I'm interested. But I'm, I'm listening I don't to you. Know. Maybe, maybe it's uh, passive aggressive. Maybe we're not really that polite. We're just mm. not telling you what we really think. There is a little bit of that. There is a, there's a little. We are. We, we will put up a wall of pleasant <laughs> to to people, to <laughs> Americans mostly. Yeah. Again, that's very interesting. I guess that uh, that is very relatable. Being British, I feel like British people are very polite on the outside. Sometimes can be passive aggressive as well. Maybe we just share a lot of personality traits as well. I definitely identify with these personality traits uh, myself. Well, we feel very superior right now watching what's happening in the elections in the States. No, I bet Canadians are doing a jig right now. <laughs> look, look at those Yankee idiots. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm kidding. But for the most part, we're just not a terribly angry people. Hockey, of course, would make you think that, that what I just said is a complete <laughs> lie. But you it's know, true. the crowds at Maple Leaf Garden, or now Air Canada Centre, like if the other team does a nice passing play, you will get a round of applause. I wore a Toronto Maple Leafs shirt to a New York Rangers game, and I evidently found out stuff about my mother. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> evidently, my mother's a prostitute. There we have it. <laughs> it's funny right. what you learn in a hockey game, huh? But do Canadians need to be more competitive? You, you say it's like American. Here's what I say. This is just my opinion. This whole book is just my opinion. I, I'm happy to hear Canadians' opinions. You know what I'm saying? And I am, actually. I am fascinated by what was... Because it's not a famous experience being Canadian. We don't have a... If you're English, you can say it's, uh, it's a little bit like Harry Potter. It's a little bit like... Or if you're American, it's like, a little bit like anything you've seen on Disney. And in Canada, it's, there's no real film for us to point to about a Canadian childhood. And it often feels like a dream. You know what I mean? Beachcombers? No. You can't point that to anybody because no. nobody outside of Canada would have seen the beachcombers, which is no much... No one's seen anything? There's nothing... No Anna else. Green Gables, and I can hardly say, okay, so growing up in Scarborough, so you remember when she got her pigtails in the inkwell? Well, it's not like that, but the point is, you know what I mean? There really isn't. We're not a culture for export. Hmm. That's actually very interesting because actually, if you think about the actual people themselves, Canada's exported hugely, so many actors, musicians, and things like that as well, but it's interesting that they don't actually produce the films or the media, the things there, and export that like with that Canada touch as well, which is, yeah, I guess quite unique. Is there any like very Canadian movies that you would recommend that show Canadian life, Canadian childhood, as they mentioned there, show that Canadian experience? I would love to know more, like maybe if, even if they're smaller ones that are not so known, I'd love to find out and maybe watch them as well. But yeah, when you actually think about the, the talent, that, talent that Canada has exported, but maybe uh, not as much of the media itself. That's okay, but everything else balances it out. I'll often say, we may not have put a man on the moon, but we've been awfully nice to the man on Earth. And then I'll say, but having said that, why can't we put a man on, on the moon? We actually could do both. That's what's so fantastic. I, I think once you're of the mindset that we're a country of alignment and a country of cooperation, then actually we're in a better position to do anything, is the truth of it, you know what I mean? And that's my feeling about Canada. And I think civility will be our greatest legacy. When you went to SNL, you formed a bit of a bond with Lord Michaels, another Canadian. He yes. took you under his wing. He really did. And gave you, he said as a Canadian, there would be two things that would be different. Well, he said, you'll do well, which was very, very nice, especially I'm scared out of my mind. He said, because you're Canadian and you'll study. You'll have the necessary built-in, baked-in humility of being a Canadian that, oh, I better learn how this works, right? And I'll pay attention to the rules, you know. We, we love rules in Canada. And I'm just saying, go to a country that has no rules and see how quickly you go, boy, I really miss rules. Mm. It's, it's okay, rules. You know, of course, everything in its correct measure. But he said, you're not going to enjoy things being unfair. Mm. He has said, you, your heart will be broken that many of the talented people that you meet, that character and talent don't go hand in hand in equal measure. Is that true? 100% true. But it doesn't matter. Hmm. It, it, it doesn't matter. For Americans, they'll say, did you meet so-and-so? And they'll say, what's he like? Canadian will say, was he nice? They need to be nice in Canada. And most cultures don't need you to be nice. Wayne, 
Yes. Was created here. Yes. He's, he's a secret Canadian? No, he's very much, I mean, I'm Because he's from Aurora, not Aurora, Ontario. I know, but uh, here I am on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Every week I think I'm getting fired. I did a, a show here on Canadian TV and I did Wayne on it. Hi, I'm Wayne Campbell and this is my Power Minute. All right. And I thought, oh, I wonder if it should be Canadian. I turned to somebody, what's like, and I described Scarborough and somebody says Aurora, Illinois. It was Christine Zander, one of the writers on Saturday Night Live. I said, oh, there's Aurora, Ontario. I handed it in that night. <laughs> That's how things work on Saturday Night Live. It's an under-rehearsed Broadway opening once a week, is what Gilda Radner called it. And um, she also said it's a monster, an insatiable monster that eats your material insatiably. The amount of decisions that you think are based on a lot of time of thought and a little bit, no, you have to just write or you're not on the show. Hmm. That actually shows the genius of the people who were on that show on him himself to actually create these iconic things, these characters in such a high pressure pressure situation in such a timely manner as well. Quite insane. So the decision to have him be from Scarborough, but have him be from the suburbs, I made no concession to a Chicago accent. It's not like he talks like, oh my God, my dad gave me a dollar. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, it's absolutely not true. He has a Scarborough accent, you know what I mean? So, and it's just little letters to home within the whole piece. Well, in lots of what you do, there's hints of Canadiana. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you can't sneak help it in. It. I do. Little, uh, little packages home. It is interesting how very little the world knows about us. It's, it's shocking, and that's fine, but that's where we're at. You know? So how much on Saturday Night Live, how much should they talk about us? About Canada? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny. Um, a friend of mine came up to see, I was at Second City in Toronto, a friend of mine came to see the show, American, and there was an anti-American song in the, in the show, which I actually didn't want to do, because I, I don't think it's interesting to be anti-American. I think it's interesting to just be Canadian, but th it was a funny song and whatever, and the friend said, wow, I had no idea that you guys thought that much about us, the American said about Canadians. And I said, well, what do you think of us? And he said, we don't. <laughs> And I was like, Jeez. wow, game set and match, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a harsh one, man. But uh, very interesting. Yeah, like such a, I mean, such a down-to-earth person. Like anything I've seen, but again, it's something I feel like is quite prevalent through these exported Canadian figures, uh, like actors and singers and so on. When you hear them be interviewed, the majority of them just seem like normal, down-to-earth, good people, they don't, they're not too showy or anything like this, like you see with a lot of American Hollywood stars and uh, stuff like that. But he seems like a great guy, very, very talented, of course, like a, a comedic genius, created so many iconic characters. And yeah, like interesting thoughts on Canada, the pride in Canada as, as their home country. Tell me what you think about this as well. What do you think about the things he spoke about? Do you have any disagreements in the things he said uh, tell me in the comments thanks <laughs>